One of the most difficult things to do as a leader is keep peace among a group of people that are working together. Because everybody has different personalities, everybody has different backgrounds, everybody has different value systems. And we find David in such a situation. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 21 and 22, after David has defeated the guys that destroyed their city of Ziklag, said, Then David returned to the brook Besor and met up with the 200 men who had been left behind because they were too exhausted to go with them. They went out to meet David and his men, and David greeted them joyfully. Now notice, David's heart is great. Okay, we've had a big victory. These guys, they were worn out. They were tired. They couldn't keep going, so they stayed with all of our goods and took care of all of our our properties and everything. So David's really happy to see everybody. David greeted them joyfully, but some evil troublemakers among David's men said, they didn't go up with us, so they can't have any of the plunder we recovered. Give them their wives and children and tell them to be gone. (laughs) Now, look at the contrast between the heart of David and the heart of some of the men that were with him. Now, these were men that had fought at David's side. These were men that had risked their lives. These were men that had pledged their loyalty to David. But they had a problem with their heart. First of all, in verse 22, they're called evil troublemakers. Now, why are they evil troublemakers? Because they're selfish. Let me say that again one more time. Because they're selfish. Let me say that one more time. Because they're selfish. They didn't want to share any of the plunder. Now, under the ancient traditions of that day, whenever you captured a city or captured a group of marauding raiders like they had just captured, all of the plunder came to them. And Forgive me, these guys had taken a lot of plunder from a lot of places, so they were very, very wealthy, very, very instantly. And they did not want to be magnanimous in victory. They were selfish. Now, David challenged them. He says in verse 23, No, my brothers, don't be selfish with what the Lord has given us. Don't be selfish with what the Lord has given us. David David had a different spirit. David had a generous spirit. David recognized that their victory came from God. David recognized that this abundance that they had came from God. So he said, no, my brothers, don't be selfish with what the Lord has given us. He, God, has kept us safe and has helped us defeat the band of raiders that attacked us. He said, hey, God has given us this great victory, given us all this abundance. Don't be selfish. Now, David recognized that every time there's victory and every time there's abundance, there are people who don't want to share. And he recognized this is going to be a future problem. So he made a policy. Let me say that again. He made a policy. He codified a new rule for battle in Israel. Verse 24, who will listen when you talk like this? We will share and share alike. Thus, those who go to battle and those who guard the equipment. From then on, David made this decree and regulation for Israel, and it is still followed today. He said, whether those who guard the baggage or those who go into the battle, everybody shares equally. And he made it a policy. Now, let me just challenge you. Sometimes in a company, sometimes in an organization, sometimes in a church, you have to learn to codify the removal of selfishness. You have to put policies in place that remove selfishness and that implement generosity. If you want to see the blessings continue, you can't let that jealous spirit grow among the people of an organization or of a church or of a company or of a nation. You can't let that selfishness grow. And the way you deal with it is you just make a rule, you make a policy, you codify generosity, and you codify the denial of selfishness.